Well, welcome back, gang. Thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with you, with us. My name's Glenn Williams. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. And uh, that was a great piece from, from Suzanne and Andrew. We really enjoy the kinds of things that they're bringing to us from the outside of the studio. We're getting to share all these cool things that are happening around not just the city, but New England. I mean, we're really reaching all over the place and bringing in some great artistic things for you to enjoy. Speaking of great artistic things, right now it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce you to Jason Burrow. Hello, Jason. How are you? I'm great, Glenn. How are you? Welcome to BNN. Thank you for being with us Thank today. Thank you for having me. Uh, how was your holiday? Did you get through the holidays okay in New Year's? Fantastic, yeah, absolutely. Good. Spent Christmas with family and Great. you know got plenty drunk on absolutely. New Year's like Absol you do. Absolutely. You know. yeah. Well, I want to, uh, the, the, you have the distinction of being the first guest of 2012. Thank you very much. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Hmm. Um, you are a painter. Yes. Uh, how, let's just get right into it. How long have you been doing it? Um, I've been doing the work so say 10 years, uh -huh. I, mean, I mean, since I was a kid, but I didn't really get serious until about a decade ago. Okay, what made you decide you wanted to, you know, do this thing? Um, I think I always knew that I wanted to be a painter, mm -hmm. um, but I was always sort of wandering about from kind of style to style. I never really felt like a, like a connection mm -hmm. was made, you know. So while I would enjoy myself, I knew that I wasn't doing anything that was really worth looking at. Mm -hmm. um, and then... There was a certain amount of you know personal upheaval, um, and I went through a period where I was locking my, myself in the studio for you know days at a time, and uh, I started just throwing my paint everywhere. Uh, and at the time, you know, I didn't go to art school. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who Jackson Pollock was. Yeah. I thought that I had come up with the most amazing new <laughs> thing that no one had ever seen, and I knew this woman that did art shows at the local library, and I went there and. Uh, so everyone's like, oh, it looks like Pollock. Luckily, I was in the library. I could find out who this guy was. And I wanted to <laughs> kill him. And I was, was already He's dead. a real guy, um, yeah. But I, I was doing this work that really felt like I was you know, connecting to something that, that yeah. mattered. And, and that's you know, evolved over the years. Right. It's not really just thrown anymore. But. Well, I think one of the things about abstract art is, is there's really, it may have that look or that, but it still has its original integrity. Because, because, because you are, it is an original throw. Hmm. It's an original knife cut. It's an you know it's an original brush stroke. Yeah. So you so you're still kind of you know bringing Jason in. Right. No, no matter what happens, it's new and it's my own. Yeah. But I really thought that I had something no one had ever even thought of before. <laughs> so that was a little disappointing. Since then, I I feel like I've taken kind of what maybe he began. You know, maybe there's somebody who did that stuff before. I don't know. Um, and kind of brought it to. Uh, a new place. A new place. Well, your, your space is where you've brought right. it to. Uh, what, what's the medium that you're using? Uh, primarily, I use uh, actually very specific paint. It's called Larkaloid, mm. made by California Paints, which despite what the name would suggest is a Massachusetts company. Um, it's a high gloss in industrial uh, enamel that they use to so paint like the, uh, fire hydrants and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it comes in safety colors in black and white. And uh, so out of those five cans, um, I do pretty much everything. Um, when I started throwing paint, I worked at a paint store, and I had access to like mistinted colors. I'd you can get, get in trouble at a paint store if you start throwing paint. You know that, don't you? I actually did a piece for my boss's wife at the time. They commissioned me to do in the basement of the store. So, oh, cool! Yeah, it's actually still up on the wall over there. That's great. Um, it was on a pair of pants, strangely enough. I was going to ask uh, you: well, Are yeah. you using canvases? Are you using wood? Are you using multiple different kinds of? of, of uh, I I used to paint on just like random junk that I would find uh, for a while. I was painting on ceiling tiles because I could buy them really cheap. And oh, then wow. as sort of, of a default, because I wanted something that was easy to hang, um, I didn't really think about it. I started using canvases. Um, because I work with really thick, heavy paint that flows, um, it took me years to realize that some of the changes that were happening after I thought the piece was done was because the canvas was um, being pushed down by the weight of the paint, it would all kind of pool up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just enough to throw stuff off, but I, it took me, it was actually maybe just two years ago I realized that's where the problem was, and I switched over to wood panels, these birch okay. wood panels. Yeah. Easy to hang, ready to go, So because I'm very impulsive, I need something, I, I don't want to spend all my time stretching canvases or cutting boards. So then it's just, it's good to go, and then the, the surface doesn't move. Right. And what I meant to paint is what's still there. So you, you're working on something flat. Yeah. And are you working from height? Uh, at times, um, not always. Uh, the last couple of years, I've been work my. I like to work on a bench, um, and usually at about hip height. 
uh, but my actual workbench has become so filled with all the little tools that I make to make paint do strange things that I can't actually set up my, I have like a plastic painting trough that I usually work in. So now I set that up on my bed. I put a piece of wood down so that it doesn't, you know, shift. And I put the, the trough down and I work there. Although recently, um, uh, I've started doing much larger work, uh, which won't fit in the trough. So I line my bed in plastic. And, <laughs> and then I, and I work on that. And, you know, I can move stuff around. And, you need a garage. And I like, I really like, um, Working in the uh, the space that I live in, um, it's important to me to be able to, you know, wake up and open my eyes and, and look go up to and work. see all yeah, the yeah. unfinished stuff on the wall. Oh yeah. And uh, I also work from home, so I, throughout the day, as I'm doing other projects, I can kind of get a sense of what I'm going to do in the afternoon when it's time to paint. And you're 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 able to afford yourself that luxury of saying, three to five or three to six is painting time. Yeah. And and, and is there anything that you need to do to to, to stir the creative juices? I mean, is there, do we have, I don't know, do we have emo um, on, the, on the, do we listen to emo at the time? Are we listening to? There are a few things that I do. Um, I used to do a lot of drugs. Okay. And I used to get really drunk. Mm -hmm. um, and well, I guess those things still play a certain role. It's not like integral the way that it used to be. Um, music is really important to me. Mm -hmm. um, Years ago, I would always try to have at least three or four sources of music in the studio coming from different spaces. So I'll usually be working on multiple projects. So as I would move around the space, you know, I can always hear everything, but it's, you know, a little more of this when I'm working ah, here, a little ah, more of that yeah, one yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll have talk radio on and a TV show and a yeah. two radios or a CD or whatever. <laughs> Um, just to kind of, so that I can't, so, so I don't get bogged down in like details, so that I, it makes it, everything was always about making it harder to think, uh -huh. so that I could just kind of do. Um, now, the work has become more concrete in recent years, and so now I work with the throne stuff, and I build these sort of environments. I don't want something that looks like a two-dimensional bunch of paint. Throw. Right. I want something that has kind of a, an innate depth to it, even though it really is from that same sort of process. Then, in that environment, uh, working with the brush, um, I, uh, I've been incorporating these characters that I've been kind of doodling for a long time but not putting into the painting, so that's in there now. Um, so now I listen to different sorts of music, and I usually only listen to one at a time. Right. Actually, Pandora is the best thing that's ever oh, happened really? okay. music-wise. I don't have to think about it. There's no ads. I'm $36 <laughs> a year, and it's right. like good it, to go. There it goes. And, uh, and uh, you know, the stations evolve. Right now, as embarrassing as it's apparently becoming to say so, I'm really into dubstep. I can like dance and rock out while I'm doing my thing, and and it's it's consistent enough that I don't have to think about it too. Is much. is the introduction of of, of character or, or or some predetermined structure mm -hmm. in, into the abstract? Is is that giving giving some of your pieces more storyline? It's actually more, more something to understand. It's interesting that you said, that you put it that way. So I actually don't start off with like a character in mind and, and then create a place to put him. Right. I let the space grow organically. I have no idea what it's going to be. And then right. when I've got what what essentially you know five years ago I would have said okay this is a finished abstract painting. Um, I'll start doing sketches of the painting and figure out who could live there. Yeah. I like. Uh, I've always felt like the work that I do, I'm creating environments. Mm. But most people I, I began to suspect just don't happen to look at it that way, and right. I want them to. Right. So I kind of take some version of myself, perhaps, and incorporate into that space just to allow people to you know, easily make that jump to the idea that right. this is actually an environment to which. So, so the pieces do have to grow. They, yeah. they, oh, they, yeah. they, they're born, and they actually grow into something that surprises you maybe sometimes. Um, more often than not, the yeah. good ones are themselves surprises. Mm -hmm. I, I do an extraordinary amount of work, but there's a very small percentage that I ever actually show to anybody. A lot of the, you know, it grows to a certain point and then it's awkward <laughs> and it's a dead end until it gets painted over right, or right, whatever. Right, right, you know, right. Probably 80% of what I do. Well, let, let's take a look at some of, the, some of them. You're going to be able to look at them over here on, on this screen here. Okay. Uh, walk us through what we're looking at, please. Okay, so this is um, actually the, my most recently completed piece. Um, this is called Decide and Conquer. Um, and it sort of goes to what I was just talking about. So this is um, a lot of thrown whipped paint. This was done on the plastic on my bed. Um, and I ended up with this space where it felt to me like um, maybe like brambles with light, light behind it. Yep. And there's that sort of spot in about a third of the way up in the center where you can see it almost looks like a square hole in the ground. And um, I, I wanted to do something with that. Um, there's this little pink rabbit down there who's sort of a 
an uh, amalgamation of a few different influences. I, um, I actually did a little bit of the work on this painting, the underpainting, you can't see much of it, with my friend Rakeen Gray, who's also a fantastic painter. And um, he uses these little rabbits um, in some of his work. Mm. Um, and I also, I, I've always loved um, Peter Rabbit. Yeah. So I like the idea of giving him an well, axe. And I, giving I him a actually, I, I see, I see the rabbit yeah. coming up to, to the bond structure and yeah. in, in all of it. He's it's deciding whether he's going to, you know, smash through the brambles or jump down the hole, right. like fight or hide, right. you know. Okay, yeah. let's, let's see the let's see the next one. We got to kind of move through these. Mm -hmm. This is um, this is called Desire. This was um, again, you know, created a texture, allowed the space to kind of live in my room for a while, um, and then I incorporated the the little figure that you see there. And the uh, the carrot. There's a, this particular brand of character, I've been doing a lot of. Um, I try to only incorporate the necessary pieces. So this guy, you know, he needs to have hands so he can reach and hold, but he doesn't need or arms rather. But he doesn't need hands. He doesn't need feet, um, and he doesn't really need much of a face. He just needs eyes so you can see where he's looking. He's he's you know kind of attached to this um, kind of easily recognizable rectangular space. Anything that I paint with blue and white generally is indicative of like home and safety and so right. forth. So he's clinging to that, but there's this carrot, this thing that he wants right. that he's having trouble okay. grabbing. This is um, called Moonlit Room. It's, it's actually a pretty significant departure from how I usually work. This was an experiment with um, setting the work on fire. So through the window there in the blue, it's hard to tell in this photograph, but there's, there's a lot of texture from bubbling. I was taking acrylic paint on a wooden panel, um, throwing lighter fluid on it, setting it on fire, and it would make the, the paint bubble and curdle. Uh, and then on top of that texture, I built the rest of this painting, just kind of working with the brush, concentrating on, on texture in a way that um, I usually only allow to come through with, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the swirly. You didn't do that stuff. on your bed, right? Uh, yeah, actually, I did. I did. Fire extinguisher in tow. Mm. Okay, I like it. Oh, this is really cool. Thank you. This is the the smallest painting I've ever done. Uh, this is actually only two inches square. Um, I did this for sort of an art challenge that the U Forge Gallery and yeah. Jamaica Plain was doing. Yeah. Uh, I think it was maybe two months ago. Um, they wanted you to do something indicative of your style in a small size. So. Uh, poured background, I, this, this is using um, a, a squeegees and squirt bottles and kind of making these splashing textures to do the sky. And then everything else is done with um, little tiny brushes. Mm -hmm. I, I just, uh, it's called small is home and far away. Okay. So I, I, I wanted to create something on a very small piece that had a great sense of depth and distance to it. Okay, we've got to move to the last one yes. really quickly here. This is our friend again. This was the first of the pieces that I did using these characters. Um, it's called... Uh, the division between our separate hells is made of heaven. Yeah. Uh, so these are like kind of two sides of the same person, one, one dealing with closing himself away from the world and one trying to reach out um, and, and uh, having difficulty kind of connecting there. Um, well, this is, this is it's really fascinating work. Uh, I mean, I, I love it. It's great. Where, what's, uh, what's, the web, what's your website so people can find you and, and find out what's going on? you got a show coming up, don't you? Yes. Uh, there's a show at 29 Newbury that'll yeah. be up uh, mid-January through mid-February. I'll have a number of pieces there, various styles. Uh, you can see my work um, at uh, www.thearttrials.com. I think that's linked up to our, our website. So if mm. you go to It's All About Arts and just click on Jason's name, it takes you right there. Yep. Jason, thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you, uh, The work is fascinating. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Listen, gang, we've got another artist to see photography coming up next. We'll be back in just one minute. Don't go away. Uh, thank you for being with us. We'll be right back.